It feels so good to be here again on another exciting episode of Insights. My name is Ola Sumbo Akiela and this is me telling you you're welcome. So if it is your first time watching Insights, please do well to follow the page, share and comment. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome. On today's episode of Insights, as you all know, I am always coming here every week to tell you good and relatable topics in which we can discuss and build on. So on today's episode of Insights, my topic is settling conflicts. That is handling conflict of interest. How do you handle conflict of interest? Sometimes handling conflict is a very important thing to do. I know it is important, but the ways in which you go in handling this conflict is more important. Conflict occurs within the family, it occurs within friends, it occurs within our religious sector, it occurs everywhere. So we need to really know how to go about settling conflict because conflict can be escalated. It can be escalated in numerous ways. And that is why I have come with handling conflict of interest. Sometimes conflicts might be of your own interest. And it might not even be of your own interest. So on today's episode, handling conflict of interest is essential in various contexts. In whichever context you find it, handling conflict of interest is very, very important. So there are some general principles I'll be mentioning today, which are effectively good in managing conflict of interest. So how do you manage conflict of interest either in your business, in government sectors, and personal relationship? The first principle in which you can manage conflict of interest is disclosure. And what does it mean when I say disclosure? The first step is often to openly disclose any potential conflict of interest. This transparency helps identify and address the issue early on. Take for instance now, in your workspace or in your office, you have a colleague who does something you do not really like or you don't even fancy. Either for you to wait for such issue to escalate, you can just walk up to this person and disclose it to this person. But then when you are able to share your dislikes with this person, this person will tend to know, oh, even if I am to crack joke with this person, I shouldn't go to this extent. So I feel this is a very good and better way in which you can hire out conflict of interest. Also, assessment. So talking about assessment, what does it mean? It means to evaluate the conflict to determine its nature and potential impact. To determine the nature, okay, what is the nature of this conflict? And to also determine its potential impact, the kind of impact it can play in future, probably within you and someone, probably within the family, probably how well or how bad it would get when it escalates. So not all conflicts are usually significant and some may be managed more easily than others. Another better way is to recursion. And in many cases doing this, the best course of action is to remove yourself from the situation where the conflict exists. Sometimes if you feel, oh, this thing is... Yeah, I do. You know, some people say, oh, I don't want troubles. I don't want stress. So the earlier, the better. If you know a conflict is about to happen or it is existing already, and you do not want to find yourself attached to whichever conflict it is, please, it is better and important you remove yourself from the circle. Another important way is to establish clear policies. And when I say establish clear policies, Organizations should have clear policies and guidelines in place for dealing with conflict of interest. This helps to ensure consistency in handling such situation. So when organizations are set to establish clear policies, either within um, um, colleagues, between colleagues rather, or within the company, between the company and another company, it helps to ensure consistency in handling so situation not that someone would come and then change the norm of things a company already has a way whereby they deal on how they deal with conflict another important thing is third party review and when it comes to 
third party review in more complex situations, it considers involving a neutral third party to access and manage the conflict objectively. And another thing is documentation. So when you say documentation, it means maintaining records of all actions taken to address conflict of interest. So in documentation, it can be crucial if questions or legal issues arise later. So it is very, very important sometimes, it is very important to document conflict. It could be in any form, you know, when there is evidence, you can always cling to this evidence and use it when the conflict escalates or when trying to manage this conflict of interest. Another idea is legal advice. So making good use of legal advice sometimes is safe and seek legal counsel if the conflict of interest is particularly complex or could have legal implications. And lastly, regular review. And what does it mean when I say regular review? Continuously monitor and reassess potential conflict of interest as situation that can be changed over time. So always have this regular review or whatever it is or whatever it could be. And it is important to know that specific steps for handling conflict of interest can vary depending on the context and the severity of the conflict. So always adhere to relevant laws, regulations, and ethical guidelines in your specific area of concern. And I hope this general principle have been able to lay down in handling conflict interest has been helpful and in case you have better principles in handling conflict interest please do well to drop it in the comment section as i'll be there to interact with you and if this video has been of benefit to you please do not forget to like do not forget to comment do not forget to share for others to enjoy until i come your way again next week i remain for last symbol bye